Hi, Garth. Oh, oh, hi. Alan decided to buy himself a GoPro. So now he's going to vlog me vlogging everything. Together we're going to vlog the I'm, world. Yes, I'm vlogging your vlog. That's what's happening. So the BMW is still at the dealership and the other one's broken and the Forerunner's broken. So for now, I have this great loaner. It's an X540, I think? And it's okay, it has the... It has the B58, the BMW straight six, that's the new N55. It's pretty cool, it's comfortable, and I get it for the weekend, so that's neat. He did get a new car. This is his new car, it's new to him. I'm now an old boomer. He is a boomer. Look at this though. It has the engine I wish I had, but it is, it is lame, because it's all-wheel drive, so no skids. Hello! You know we had to do it again. Always. This is our spot. We hang out, we have to come here. This is where he took me on our first date. We had a date. Sorry, I guess I'm out of touch with things. So Adam, thanks for my food. You're an alright, you're an alright guy sometimes. <laughs> oh, so uh, check out the interior of the new whip. He doesn't know it yet, but he's he's probably gonna buy this. Or one like it one day. It's pretty cool. Show the nub. The nub. Oh the nub! Look at the nub. Isn't this so adorable? Girthy. It's yeah, it's it's short, but it's stout. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the biggest fan of the gauges in the world. Also wait, is that where the button is? Yeah, for the or heated wheel. The, um, the tack goes backwards. Ew, I don't really like that. I don't that. like it at all. So as you saw before, Alan is here, and he brought a Jeep. But actually, more importantly than that, for his E36, he has a donor engine, which is an M50 Vanos. It's the same one that's in the wagon. Here it is. And he's going to drop it off at my house for now, so he can rebuild it and do some cleaning up of it generally and then put it into the E36. Now what's cool, because the E36 came with this engine, he already has the mount brackets, these guys, and similar enough engine mounts. So um, pretty soon he'll be able to have that installed in his car and he'll have actual power, which will be nice for him. Also, I came home from work the other day and this asphalt cold planer was in the shop parking lot, the skid steer was there, and as of this morning, there is now a paver. It is strange and I don't know whose they are, but I actually have a license to drive a paver. I used to work for Volvo uh, construction equipment, and one of the things we made were pavers. This is called a Blahnox style paver. Uh, basically that was one of the original companies that made this kind of paver, and it's pretty cool because you fill this entire hopper with asphalt. It takes several, several tons of asphalt. And then this conveyor belt brings the asphalt to the back. If you see right in the back, there's a little swirly bit doodad there. That is called the screed. It's like a hot mat and that's physically what puts the asphalt down level on the ground. It's actually really fun and pretty easy to operate, but hard to operate really well and smoothly. But the way they keep the asphalt from sticking to this stuff is by spraying it down with some sort of, uh, it's almost like a solvent, but that's expensive. So a lot of companies just spray it down with diesel. It really makes me sad because it's terrible for the environment, but it's cheaper and it's quicker and you can just spray diesel over everything and it's good. Obviously they didn't do such a good job on these here rollers, but this has got a lot of tar on this one. But not their equipment, so what do they care? Alan is backing the Jeep up to the shop door so we can get the engine out of the trailer. Unfortunately, the engine hoist is kind of barricaded in and also holding up my M50 donor engine. So we're going to have to uh, move that. But here's my M50. This is 
the one out of the donor car, the parts car, for the wagon. As you see, it's covered in oil and it's a terrible mess. But we have an engine crane that's holding it. So we'll just need to swap that real quick. But that shouldn't be too hard. Although we'll need to figure out how to lay that engine down so it's not sitting on the oil pickup. Eventually, I'm going to do a walk around of the shop and show you all the cool things that we have here because we have a lot of cool things here. Mainly, we have a lot of things here, um, but you'll see it soon. So we got Alan's engine out of the trailer and onto the ground. It was already partially on a stand, which is convenient. So here it is. The glorious M50 straight six. Technical oh, update, Venos. Goes boah. Not, no, not really, it doesn't actually do that. Kind of just, hmm, hmm, it's slow. Yeah, that's better than mine. When I had the automatic in the wagon, it used to go, wah, wah, and then it would shift. It, it like, right around 4,000 RPM on the dot, any gear wide open, it, would, it was just, wah, wah. I don't, I have no idea, but was it stopped doing, it, no. Well, see, it cleaned itself out, and now that's why it's dying. Oh, of course, of course. It was choked up, but it was, like, saving itself. And then you just obliterated it. So, actually, the M50 is kind of a cool engine. Huh? I'm not talking to you. Anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. I'll rudely interrupt you whenever I want. So, the M50 is actually kind of a cool engine. So, of course, this is the thermostat housing. Um, that's not really that cool, but <laughs> it, uh, I don't know what's cool about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a straight six. It has Venus. What else, what else is cool about this engine? I was told it runs. He was told it runs. That's a good start. This is the timing chain tensioner. It's actually pretty neat because you access it from the outside, like how a good timing chain tensioner should be, not like a Honda K20 series. Um, I wonder what goes here. Alan wonders what goes there. Probably something to the DME or something like that. Some John. The yeah, alternator is force air it, cooled. So... Which is actually That's pretty clever, cool. actually. I wonder if I could do that on the 400. No. So, water pump, crank, idler, idler, alternator, power steering pump, and then the AC gets its own belt because there are some versions with, of cars with this engine that don't have AC. I think it the did. The Peon spec. This one did, yes, but there are others that don't. In our infinite wisdom, we flipped the engine upside down so Alan could take the pan off, but we failed to consider the fact that there could still be coolant in the engine. Turns out there is still coolant in the engine. So currently, Alan is undoing all the bolts for the oil pan, so we can take it off to see if the engine is good, bad, ugly, ugly, etc. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. I don't remember doing that. I didn't touch that one, did I? Oh, okay. I don't think I did. That could be why it's so oily up here. <laughs> Original gasket? Because I don't. Nope. No. I'm going to say no. Absolutely not. So, this is the inside of the M50. Actually, it looks pretty good. Um, one issue that a lot of the M50s have is the oil pump nut on this oil pump is reverse threaded 
So, nice. yeah. so you have to be careful because that will come loose over time. So what a lot of people do is drill a hole through the side of the nut and then use safety wire on it. That's fine. It's a non-tensioned chain. All right. Yeah. So you will you should safety wire that. Uh, I saw one person that welded the nut down and like, I wouldn't do that, but I would actually just buy a separate uh, nut, like a spare nut, and do that. Look at that. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, it looks pretty good down here. Not upset at all by that. The pre filter on your pickup looks good. I can't turn my light off. I'm incapable of doing that. Yeah, looks pretty good. Girdle looks good. Definitely had an oil leak. I would almost be willing to bet that the timing cover had been off once based on that, but not so bad. Yeah, looks pretty good. That's scary. Oh. It's supposed to be that loose. Yeah. Okay. So the M50 is a pretty interesting engine. It was one of BMW's, not early straight sixes, but it certainly was an antiquated straight six, but it was like the first of the modern era. So you see things like oil pump chains that don't have tensioners and there's a lot of play in that. And the pump itself is reverse threaded, but it's, it's a pretty good engine. Honestly, it's a good old slant six you from think I change BMW. The pump it's fine. Poor guy.